Let us go to God in prayer. Oh God, search us this day. Bring renewal to the weary soul. Bring restoration to the fallen soul. Bring repentance to the lost soul. And keep ready the faithful soul. Forgive us all of our sins. Make us right with thee. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to thank Brother Raglan for reading our scriptural text, which came from the book of Mark. The chapter was 1, and the verses were 35 through 39. Please remember those verses for next week, because that's what I will preach on next week. Decided to preach on something else on uh, this morning. And so on this morning, I would like to preach from the subject conversion. Conversion. See to it. Place an emphasis on the letter C. C to it. Now, when we talk about conversion, what is conversion? Well, conversion means to turn. It means to turn from sin to God. It means to turn about. If we were to measure this in geometry, conversion would be that 180 degree turn. King David was familiar with this term, conversion. For he vowed in a prayer to God to bring transgressors back to God. Listen to your Bible as we take a look at Psalm 51 and the verses 13. This is David's penitent prayer, one of his penitent psalms. Psalm 51 and the verses 13, the Bible reads, Then I will teach transgressors your way and sinners will return to you. When we look at this word conversion, we understand that conversion includes turning from wrong actions and wrong attitudes to right ones. This is what James said a person does when they are able to find someone who is wandering and bring them back to the Lord in James chapter 5. And the verses are 19 and 20. Converted persons are individuals who have humbled themselves like little children before the Lord. This is a qualification of kingdom entrance that we read about in Matthew chapter 18, verses 3 and 4. When we see this word conversion, we understand that it is closely associated with repentance because repentance is a prerequisite to conversion, for a person to say that they have been converted but have not given up sin, that person lies to you because repentance precedes conversion. In other words, a person cannot be converted unless they have first repented. Listen to your Bible as we take a look at Acts chapter 3, and the verses are 19 through 21. In Acts chapter 3, and the verses are 19 through 21, the Bible reads, Repent, therefore, and turn back, that your sins may be blotted out, the times that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed to you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. One of the most renowned conversions we read about in Scripture happens to be the fourth conversion narrative that we read about in the book of Acts, and that is the conversion of a man by the name of Saul. This person by the name of Saul went from being a Pharisee to an apostle of Christ, a child of God, a Christian. He went from being the Pharisee Saul to us knowing him as the apostle Paul. And in Acts chapter 9, we have come to understand that conversion is the experience of turning to God with a change of mind as well as a change of heart to receive the gift of salvation. Now, as Christians, we know what conversion is all about because a Christian is a converted person. A Christian is a changed person. 
A Christian is one who ceased being an old creation and has been transformed into a new creation. And in order for us as Christians to be an instrument of conversion in the lives of many, and this is what we are called upon to do, there are three points we must grasp regarding this subject of conversion. The first C that I want us to deal with on this morning is the C for candidate. So let's talk about the candidates for conversion. Now, when we're talking about those that are qualified to be converted, the candidates for conversion, there are only two candidates for conversion, the unconverted and the deconverted. Now, you may be saying, is there such a word as deconverted? Well, if I say it enough times, Oxford and Webster will pick it up. And so we are going to talk about the unconverted and the deconverted, and I will define as such. One, the unconverted. Number one, the unconverted. The unconverted is a person that has never obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is what we know as an alien sinner. The Bible talks about an alien sinner, somebody that is on the outside. When we take a look at Ephesians chapter 2, and the verses are 11 through 13. In Ephesians chapter 2, and the verses are 11 through 13. The Bible reads, Therefore remember that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands. Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once were afar off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. It is the blood of Christ that takes a person that was unconverted and makes them one who is converted. The unconverted becomes converted when they repent of their sins and are baptized for the re very removal of those sins. Listen to your Bible as we take a look at the first law of pardon in Acts chapter 2 and the verse is 38. In Acts chapter 2 and the verse is 38, the Bible reads, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, that's the unconverted. Let's talk about the deconverted. What is meant by deconverted? Well, we're talking about a person that was faithful, but is now unfaithful. That means this person was committed, but is now fallen away. This is also known as an erring brother or an erring sister that we read about in James chapter 5. And the verses are 19 through 20. So listen to your Bible as we take a look at James chapter 5. And the verses are 19 and 20 where the Bible reads, My brothers, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. The deconverted becomes reconverted when they confess their sins and pray for forgiveness, which is the second law of pardon that we read about in Acts chapter 8, and the verse is 22. In Acts chapter 8, in the verse is 22, the apostle Peter tells Simon, Repent, therefore, of this wickedness of yours, and pray to the Lord, that if possible, the intent of your heart may be forgiven you. So just to recap, the alien sinner, the unconverted, is to repent and be baptized. The erring brother, the deconverted, is to repent and and pray in order to be reconciled to God. Now, those are the candidates for conversion. Now, what is the conditions 
for conversion? Or what are the conditions for conversion? Well, in order for one to be converted to Christ, the Bible makes it clear that there are some prerequisites, i.e. some things beforehand that must be met that leads one to conversion. Number one is the responsibility of the person that needs to be converted. They must have an open heart and an open Bible. They must have an open heart and an open Bible. By open heart, we're talking about that they must have an open mind and they must open their eyes and they must open their ears that they may receive with meekness this engrafted word, which is able to save their soul. In order for them to be able to receive the things that are written in the Bible, they have to open their Bible and be like the Bereans in Acts chapter 17, verse 11, and search those things daily, whether they are so. One must hear about Christ, but it's not enough to hear about the man, and, but we must also hear about his plan. We must hear about his cross. We must hear about his cause. What did Jesus do to bring about our salvation? They must hear that message. But not only must they hear that message, but the second thing the unconverted must do is that they must have a hunger and thirst after righteousness. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 5, and the verse is 6, that if we hunger and thirst after righteousness, we are blessed because if that's what we are hungry and thirsty for, the book says that we will be filled. There must be a desire to do the right things the right ways for the right reasons. So we know what the conditions are for the person that needs conversion, but to those of us who are converted, our responsibility to the unconverted is that we must exercise discretion. We need to know the right word to say at the right time in order to bring this person out of darkness into the marvelous light of God. When we look at Mark chapter 12 in the verses 34, we see that Jesus was having a conversation with some scribes and some Pharisees and some Sadducees. But yet, out of all those groups, there was a lawyer that spoke up and said something that was right and positive and theologically sound. And Jesus said to this person, you are not far from the kingdom. In other words, the message he gave to the Pharisees and what they needed to do was nothing close to what this man needed to do because he was almost where he needed to be. So he only needed to hear what he needed to hear to get him from the point where he was at to the point where Jesus wants him to be. See, it is through discretion that we can gauge an idea of what we must do and share next from God's word in an effort to bring them to obedience in Christ. One of the things that will actually help us in our discretion is that if we are honest with ourselves by using our own experiences in being converted, these are the things that would assist us. We need to think back to where we were as to what we were saying when we didn't know anything was wrong. We need to think back to what we were saying when we heard that we were wrong. We need to think back to what we were saying when we believed that we were wrong. And what were we saying when we wanted to make things right? Because chances are people that we are talking to are saying those very same things. And that helps us to understand, okay, this is where they are at. And now this is where I need to go to get them to where I am. And so these are the conditions for conversion. I want to close with the third C. And the third C is the crop from conversion. There is something that has to be produced if we have truly been converted to Christ. 
And Paul tells us what those things are. He calls them fruit in Galatians chapter 5. And the verses are 22 and 23. In Galatians chapter 5. And the verses are 22 and 23. The apostle Paul writes, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, Against such things, there is no law. The crop from conversion is the fruit of the Spirit. We need to understand on this morning that converted people do converted things. And these are the products displayed in the life of one who is truly a new creation in Christ Jesus, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. When it talks about that we must produce love, we must produce the love of Christ, according to Romans chapter 8, verse 35, and Romans chapter 8, verse 39, 38 and 39. We are to produce joy. We are to produce the joy of of the Holy Spirit according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and the verses 6 we are to produce peace we are to produce the peace of God according to Philippians chapter 4 and the verse is 7 we are to produce patience and that's patience in well doing according to Romans chapter 2 and the verses are 6 through 8 we are to produce kindness and that's kindness towards brethren, according to Colossians chapter 3. And the verses are 12 and 13. We are to produce goodness, the Bible tells us. And that's goodness to teach others, according to Romans chapter 15. And the verse is 14. We are to produce faithfulness. And that's faithfulness in following the word of God according to Psalm 119, and the verse is 30. We are to produce gentleness, and that's gentleness towards our enemies, according to 2 Timothy chapter 2, and the verses are 24 through 26, and we are to produce self-control, and that's self-control in all things, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 through 27. As I close on this morning, where do you stand? As humanity, we fall in one of four categories. If we are unconverted, the solution is simple. We need to obey the gospel. You've heard God's word on this morning according to John 6, 45. Jesus said it is written in the prophets, and they all shall be taught of God. Every man, therefore, that have heard and have learned of the Father, Jesus says, that person can come to me. You can come to Christ by believing that he is who he says he is. For the Bible tells us in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Are you ready to give up sin on this morning? Jesus says in Luke 13, 3, I tell you nay, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Would you be willing to openly and publicly confess him this day, according to Matthew chapter 10, verse 32? For Jesus says, whosoever shall confess me before men, him will I confess before my Father, which is in heaven. Be baptized. Have your sins washed away if you are unconverted so that you can become a child of God. For Jesus says in Mark chapter 16, verse 16, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. And live for Jesus from this day forward. Remain faithful to the very end and you shall receive a crown of life according to Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. But maybe you are not unconverted. Maybe you are converted. The message to you is to stay faithful. Stay holy. Remain holy. Don't let the world cause you to turn your back on God. 
Don't turn your back on Jesus. Stay faithful and add to your faith virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly kindness, and charity. For the book tells us in 2 Peter chapter 1, beginning with verse 5, that if these things are in us and abound, we shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the work of our Lord. And so stay converted. But maybe you are among the deconverted. Maybe you have walked away from God. Well, this is your opportunity to come back to Christ. The door is still open. If you have fallen away, if you have sinned, if your fellowship has been severed because you have decided to live for the world, then to live for the Christ, then this is your opportunity to repent, pray, come back to the Lord, confess your faults according to 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. Make things right with your God before it's eternally and everlasting too late. For as long as we have breath in our body and blood in our veins, the door is still open. For each day we live and don't make it right, just know that that door is closing a little bit each day. Because when Jesus comes again, that door will never be opened again. So we need to get right with him while it's on our minds. Go from being deconverted to being reconverted. Maybe you have come a mighty long way. Maybe you have you was unconverted, you, you came to Christ, you left Christ, and now you back. My words to you are the same words that Jesus gave to the woman that was caught in the act of adultery. Go and sin no more. You have come back. God has given you a second chance or a third chance. Or if you're like me, he just keeps giving you another chance because you used up your second chance a long time ago. Just understand that God is good. He is gracious. He is merciful. If we have come back, just remain. Just give up the things that have caused you to be separated from him and thank God that he has given you this moment to be right with him and to stay right with him. So wherever you are on this morning, we ask that you make a wise-hearted decision while together we stand and sing the song that has been selected.